Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emanuel, I'm an airline pilot and today let's continue with the descent and approach in the Microsoft's ATR72. So we're about to start our descent and we have just gotten our descent clearance. So let's select our target altitude down and we can put it down all the way to 3000 feet from where we are going to start the approach later on. Make sure that VNAV is armed which it is right now. We see we've got VNAV Alt enabled and the VNAV deviation is showing. And as we're about to pass our top of descent, the airplane will automatically start descending then. As I've mentioned in my earlier video, once we actually start the descent, the descent checklist may plop up again on the procedure menu, even though we've done it before. And here you can see it popping up. So we have already read the descent checklist in the previous video, so I'm just quickly going to go over it in order to get rid of the descent checklist information here. And this pulls up the approach checklist, which is now ready for use. Do note that as we are leaving the cruising altitude, we can initially leave our power where it is to accelerate all the way to the magenta bug, but then we need to reduce our power in order to control our airspeed. If you are overspeeding the plane, it is going to exit the VNAV path mode and is going to um, go into a protective mode. So do keep an eye on your engaged modes over here. We are crossing flight level 100 in the descent right now, so let's switch on the landing lights, the seatbelt sign, the no device sign, and check the cabin pressurization system. There we go. We've got the cabin altitude descending, it's in auto mode, and we've got a differential pressure of 327, that looks good. So we can continue our descent like that. Okay, that is pretty much our descent preparation and our crossing flight level 100 complete. Next up already comes our speed reduction for our landing as soon as we have actually reduced, um, oh, sorry, as soon as we have actually passed the transition altitude and set our tune Now, for the purpose of demonstration, I'm now going to overspeed the airplane that you can see how it leaves the VNAV path node when that happens. So I'm now adding a little bit of power and I'm going to run the airplane into an overspeed here, just to give you a little demonstration on what to watch out for as you are descending. Here we go. You can see pitch hold mode came on, and you get the amber reduced speed message over there. So I'm pulling thrust off again, and when our speed is below 248, like it is now, we can re-engage VNAV mode, like this. Now we're back on a VNAV, and it is going to follow the VNAV path once again. Now, at this point, let's assume that air traffic control is friendly today, and is going to give us a shortcut. And you can see, once again, the overspeed situation there. So let's assume that air traffic control is friendly and giving us a shortcut. Let's go to VNAV, and in order to fly shortcut, we press the DTO page, and then simply select the waypoint where we want to go to. In this case, that's going to be the Fox India 01. We could specify an inbound course and an intercept distance. However, for the purpose of today's video, let's go direct to the waypoint. Execute. Here we go. And this is going to recalculate the VNAV path, obviously. And the airplane is now heading directly towards the final approach fix. Do note that VNAV is not simply going to initiate a deceleration like you are used to from your beloved Boeing and Airbus aircraft, so you will have to take care of that manually. Basically, when passing 6000 feet, that is what my line trainers always told me on the 737, it's a good idea to start bringing back the speed to 220 knots. So I'm reducing the power right now so that our speed is going to start coming back. When you are doing that, it is a good idea to also match that speed bug. So we'll go to manage speed over here, 220 knots. Do note that ATR usually does recommend keeping the speed in the uh, managed speed and not using selected. So this is just a procedure that I can recommend you based on my experience as a pilot and not something that is officially recommended by ATR. Now, as we're approaching the final approach fix, we need to go out of the managed modes and into the selected. Now, at present, the airplane is not going to do that automatically, so here's what we'll do. Let's go 
vertical speed, heading select, match the uh, heading bug. And now, let's select ILS1 on the indicators. Do note that we still have to manually set the course of the runway. This is not happening automatically. So, we can cheat real quick. Look down here, ILS01, course 005 degrees. So I am going to simply select it to 005 at this point. Also, since we're in the descent, we can switch to um, local pressure right now, 1013, set and checked. And once that is done, we can basically start our approach checklist. So let's go right into it. Seat belts on, landing lights on, altimeters set and checked, cabin altitude checked. We did that earlier on, remember? Approach check is complete. Okay, let's start bringing our airplane right into the ILS. We are currently a little bit above the glide slope, but the good news is that those turboprop aircrafts, they just drop down. So I'm pulling the power into idle. Let's go speed hold mode, and you will be surprised how well this thing is going to descend. So, oh. approach mode is on, and look at how quickly we are catching up again. The thing gives us 3,000 feet a minute over here. It's lovely, isn't it? Okay, right back onto the glide slope. Localizer capture, glide slope capture. So let's go into the FMC right now. Onto performance. Approach speed has activated automatically. However, in case it didn't, you could select the approach speed manually down here. When that is selected, we put the speed bug back in automatic. It brings us our magenta speed bug at 170 knots. And do note over here our maximum flap extension speed. So we are below that, so let's go ahead and extend the flaps into the 15 degree notch. Flaps 15 is selected. This reduces the target speed to 140 knots, which is basically below the flap speed for the next higher speed. So like that, the airplane is now automatically going to um, decelerate. Do note that if you catch an ILS at an acute angle like we just did, it might overshoot the approach. And indeed, the ATR flight crew operations manual says that a single overshoot may occur when you are capturing at an acute angle. Alright, so with that we are pretty much done. Let's go ahead and disconnect the autopilot here and start manually flying the plane a little bit. And I'm going to align us manually with the runway centerline. When you intercept the ILS at an angle of 30 degrees or less, you will usually not have any problems flying onto the ILS. Mist approach altitude 2500 is set. And we can now go gear down. Note how the speed starts dropping as soon as you extend the landing gear. And once we're below the flap pluckout speed for the next flap speed limit, which we have over here, we can now go ahead and extend our landing flaps. Okay, landing checklist, having true advice, landing gear down, flaps down, power management, set into the takeoff position, speed's checked. Anti has not required, external lights on, and that is the landing checklist complete. Alright! Landing the ATR is quite easy. By the way, ignore that GPWS light here that always comes on for whatever reason. So, landing the ATR is quite easy indeed. Um, Approaching you don't have an auto throttle, so you have to use manual thrust, but as you can see, it is fairly easy to maintain. Now, we are going to. Minimum. Continue, and basically we keep the airplane flying down towards the runway until we are at um, 20 feet, and then we will do a very slight flare. The plane flares very easily, so you don't need a lot there. 50, 40, 30, 20, 20, idle, flare. And we're down. Use the reverses at your discretion. I've just pulled them up over here. Bit of manual brakes. 
slowly return to the center line if you deviated from it. And that's pretty much it. Okay, out of reverse, vacate the runway, at a suitable exit, and that is it. Welcome to Fuerte Ventura Airport. As you can see, things can go quite quick on the approach itself, especially on the final stages, but the ATR is a very forgiving airplane. It's uh, It really doesn't take long to reduce the speed once you've got the power, or the, uh, power levers in idle. And that's it. Okay, we're going to stop the airplane here. I will do the shutdown procedures and the after landing procedures in a separate video as this one is slowly getting too long. So thank you very much for watching. I do hope that you have enjoyed this. And if you did, then do let me know in the comments below. As always, like, comment and subscribe. And if you really like what I'm doing, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Or to welcome you as a channel member, which is going to give you exclusive access to new videos before they're released for everyone else. Thank you for watching, and I'm looking forward to welcoming you again soon.